Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Picket Fun Studios. Today I'm super excited to be working with a set that I illustrated. This is the Sweet Spooky Holiday. Um, we have been doing, you know, some different cupcake releases with Picket Fence. And so this one is the first one that we've ever done where it's not already decorated, um, but there's lots of options to decorate it. And so we're going to look at that today as well as talk about um, some Copic coloring. So here I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to put everything together. So I decided I was going to stamp all of the images. Um, and if you stamp them all just one time, you would be able to decorate. Well, what did I decorate? I think I decorated three or four cupcakes. Um, so there's some that are kind of like themed to go together. You can mix and match them however you would like. I am using the Intense Black ink from Picket Fence Studios because it is safe for alcohol markers since we are going to be doing some Copic coloring. Um, but basically I just stamped them all in black and then I set about the coloring. I stamped two of these full sheets um, so that way I would have any, you know, accessories that I wanted. And then I also stamped an additional two cupcakes and some of the um, candy straws. So heading right into the Copic coloring, this is something that like for me, when I first started coloring and I wasn't really happy with where I was at with my coloring, you know, it came down to like, I just had to sit down and practice, but practicing was really kind of very boring for me. I did not enjoy making the same card multiple times. Now, and that's not going to be true for everybody, but it is for me. So I didn't enjoy making the same card multiple times. I didn't enjoy, um, you know, necessarily coloring three or four of the same image um, and then just having them all look alike. Like what I, the only way I could see to use those would be to, um, you know, basically make very similar kind of cards. And if you watch my channel, you know that I don't, I never make the same card twice. Um, so we're going to talk about how sets like this can really help us with practicing. But first, let's talk about the coloring. I've colored several cupcakes on my channel before. So this is probably not news to you if you've watched those other ones. But basically, when you're coloring a cupcake wrapper, you're looking for the peaks and the valleys. And your shadows are going to go in the valleys and your highlights are going to go on the peaks. Um, so when I'm going in and adding the shadows, I'm looking for the part that I want to look inset or kind of dipped in. And for the peaks, I'm looking for the part that I want to stand out or look taller. Um, you know, like it sticks out more than the other pieces. And don't worry we're going to color this cupcake a couple more times. For the actual cupcake, I chose to do like kind of a vanilla look. And then for the frosting, I'm going to do vanilla as well. I chose to do um, some warm grays for my quote unquote vanilla frosting um, because I knew that I was going to be using the cool grays for the black. So I didn't want them to uh, look similar. I mean, bl black is obviously not going to look like white, but I didn't want the tones to be similar. So when you're coloring something white or just adding in the shadows, and so going in and looking for where my shadows would be, kind of where one layer of frosting sits on the other is going to have some shadows. And then also kind of around the edges where it's kind of like smushed out might have some more shadows. At the tip, the part that's tucked behind will have more shadows. And here, white, the white of the paper, is acting as our lightest color. So we're only using these three colors to add the shadows, but the majority of the paper will remain white. And as we're putting down our darkest color, our mid-tone is going to go right over that darkest color and slightly extend out, and then the same thing for the lighter color. And we're leaving most of this white. I'm also going to show you how to do um, some chocolate frosting, which you could use that chocolate frosting to substitute any other color you would like to do. Um, Alberto, amazing, amazing colorist. I don't think he does videos, but he is on Instagram. Um, he colored this with a black wrapper and orange frosting, and it looked amazing. Um, so you can, you know, you can color it any way you want. I went with traditional flavors because I knew I was going to be adding all of the color with the wrappers and then the accessories. 
This little candy straw I did striped. It's much easier to do if you do the white first. And I'm going to do the same thing for the little witch's legs and feet. I'm going to go in and lay down the gray um, just on the left and right hand side so that it's a center highlight. And then this will make it much easier for me to go in and just hit those stripes that I want to be colored without having to try to color each individual square white and then each individual square green. I'll just concentrate on the uh, individual green squares because the white will already be down. That other little stick is basically so you could turn any of these pieces into a topper. Um, like, a you know, how you would traditionally make cupcakes. You would put in, um, you know, just like a little toothpick or whatever, or a little stick uh, so that your design kind of stands out on top of your cupcakes. So any one of these can be a topper, um, but that Happy Halloween up there is really the one that um, I was kind of envisioning as the topper if you wanted to just stick a little Happy Halloween in there. Speaking of this, I also colored this the warm grays, and I'm just adding a little bit of shadows kind of where it dips in. This is one of the ones that, like, honestly, I don't necessarily know that it needs to have a lot of shading. It's pretty simple. And you could also do this colored, um, you know, not just white, but another color. But since I got, you know, a lot of neutrals going on, that's what I'm going with. The letters do have like a little bit of a outline. So for the ones that you can see, you know, the outline I'm going in with the orange, um, just to, again, another little pop of color. So, um, yeah, just, just building them out. Like I knew I was going to have a lot of neutrals um, with the cupcakes themselves. And then also we have a lot of items that would be colored black, like our bat, our spider stamp black, that little mini bat stamps black. Um, so yeah, trying to incorporate the colors as best that I can uh, while still having some neutrals. So anywho, back to the, the practice portion. Basically, with the practice, like here we have three different um, candy corns. We're going to color them all the same way, so we're still going to get that practice in, but any time that you can find a set or that you can sit down to color something, like these cupcakes, right? The What helps to make it less boring is, one, switching up the colors. So if you're coloring the same kind of things, um, you know, you could switch up the colors to help make your practice session a little bit more interesting. It also helps you experiment with color combinations, which we'll talk about a little bit more when we get to the other um, cupcake wrappers. But even like these candy corns. So they're all candy corn, obviously, but they're all just shaped a little bit different or the sizes are a little bit different. So this can also help break up the monotony of practice pieces, you know, where you feel like you're just coloring the same thing over and over. And I ended up coloring, I think I colored six of them, but I actually only used five. Basically, if you're looking for something to help you practice with Copic coloring or any kind of coloring, whether that's watercolor or colored pencils, and you're just looking to have a practice session, I would highly recommend either looking for a set that you can use in multiple ways or looking for a set that has similar things that are kind of the same, but a little bit different. So like maybe different, the same flowers, but different floral clusters, things like that. So that way you don't get bored with your practice and you're still having fun with your crafting um, because nobody wants to feel like their hobby is a chore. And even though we all need to practice to get better at skills, you know, whether that's coloring or anything else. Um, but you don't want to feel like it's like, oh, well, now I have to do this again, or I have to color one more thing. or So finding a, something that like this particular set, we have the one cupcake, but we can use it with so many different things helps me personally to just break up that kind of practicing. Plus, I like to try out different color combinations and things like that. So that helps me here with her boots. Well, I say her. It, I, I suppose it could be a him because um, she don't have he or she don't have a face. She's got a hat and some feet. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, coloring black can be a little bit challenging because when you're coloring something black, just like adding the shadows to white, we still want there to be the white of the paper. Adding shadows to black, if you're coloring something black, you still want there to be some black, but you don't want to lose all the detail of your drawing either. So basically what I do is I go in, I put the black kind of where I need it to be the darkest, and then I supplement with grays. So I will use a C9, a C7, a C5, which still is going to give me that feeling of black, but it's not going to completely dilute all of the um, things that make the stamp interesting. So like on the shoes, the lightest portion I left were by her laces. So that little detail is still in there. It's not just eradicated by the black. Um, but those shoes still look black. With the hat, same thing, like the folds up top, I am leaving so that there's a little bit of a highlight on the right-hand side and in the center of the hat, again, leaving those. For the bat, for the bat, in order to help him to look a little bit more dimensional, I'm adding black to the inset portion of his wings, to the middle of his body, and just kind of like to the left and right of his little ears. And this is going to help it so he still looks multidimensional, but he still reads as black. Um, I also, if you're interested, I have another, um, I did this, I think, last Halloween or the Halloween before. I have a black cat tutorial um, that kind of goes over this a little bit more in depth, the idea of, you know, color something black and still keeping the details. So working out to those, you know, mid-tones, that C9 and that C7, in those darker sections, um, as well as his body, there's still going to be a lighter edge from that C7 that's going to give his body shape. Same thing with his feet. Like we're we're saving his feet for that, like the tip tops of his feet for that C5 so that it will look like it is higher or before his body because that's our highlight color. Same thing for the little sections of his wings, those little kind of like triangle sections that come down. Since those are lighter, they will look more forward. Now, it you can very easily lose the detail of his little fangs and his little eyes. I did go back in with a white gel pen and kind of put both in. I didn't love the little eyeballs being kind of the same as the teeth. So once it was dry, I did go back over it with that C5 just to knock back the eye color a little bit. Um, and then what else did I do? Oh, I put little eyeballs on my little... Um, on my little spider. And if you wanted to have like yellow eyes or green eyes or red eyes, you could do the white gel pen, wait for it to dry, and then just go over it with a Copic and that would work. So here, doing the chocolate of the cupcake, you can see I'm laying down my shadows in the same place. That isn't changing. Where those cupcake layers are laying on top of each other, their shadows, um, you know, it's kind of stretching out to the center. Again, most of what I'm coloring here, I'm coloring with a center highlight, so I'm leaving that lightest portion in the middle. But here, I'm also going to kind of extend them out a little bit further. Now, remember with the white, the first one we colored, we were leaving the white of the paper. For this one, we're going to fill it all the way in. So we're going to be a little bit more generous with our midtones, both the dark and the light. Because your shadow color, in our case, this is an E29, should be the darkest where the shadows are. And then your highlight color should be the lightest just where the highlight is, which means there's only going to be a little bit of each color. The vast majority of the color that you will see in your finished product is going to be your midtones. So here, this is my E25. This is my light mid-tone in my four color combination. And we're pretty much going to fill in everything except for our highlight. The other thing is, you know, uh, alcohol markers are transparent. So when you go over your lighter colors or your darker colors with a lighter marker, it will pick up some of the color 
but you can also build them up. So here I've done a chocolate cupcake with chocolate frosting, but I want to make sure that that frosting is lighter than the cupcake. I want to make sure that they read as two separate items. So I'm going to go in with a second layer into the cupcake to make sure that it is darker. Now we're going to tackle coloring the cupcake wrapper again. So once again, we're starting with our darkest color. We're looking for those valleys. So the places that it's going to be the darkest, you know, in those, those valleys, I'm just kind of lining the left and right hand side. Traditionally, a cupcake wrapper is darker toward the bottom. So I'm also adding a little bit more shading to, along the bottom of my cupcake wrapper. And I'll do this all the way through. So it's going to look, it's going to look bad until it looks good, basically, um, because it's going to look a little bit crazy. Then with my dark mid-tone, I'm going to go in, I will fill in the rest of those valleys. In this case, I'm using a VO1, a VO4, a VO6, and a VO9. That 6 and the 9 are pretty far apart from each other, so it can be difficult to get them to blend. But here's a trick that you can use. This is helpful if you have like I do here, a you know color combination that's a little bit further apart, but it's also helpful if you have limited markers. You can do what is called tip-to-tip -tip blending. So you basically take your lighter color, rub it against the tip of the darker color, and that gives you kind of a middle tone that you can use to then put down to help them blend out better. I don't use this a lot, but it is something that's really helpful. Like I said, if you don't have a lot of markers or if you're trying to find a, a middle of the road to make them come together. And then from there, I'm going to add my lighter mid-tone kind of just up from the bottom. And then the lightest color will be on my highest points, which is the part of the cupcake wrapper that is going to stick up. For this one, you can see I'm using, so my traditional orange is like a Y08 or a Y38, then a YR04, a YR07, a YR09. But because they're in the same family, it doesn't afford us a lot of opportunity for contrast. So if you find yourself using the same color families and really not feeling like your coloring is super dimensional, try swapping out one of the colors. So in this case, I swapped out my darkest color, um, for an E09. It is a much warmer brown, um, but it gives it gives it like a almost like an orange rust color versus a bright orange, which will help us to create that dimension. And then using this, again, we're, you know, maybe you don't have all of the markers you can pull from different color families and see about how they work together. We're also, you can do what I call color glazing. So let's say, like in, in this case, how I'm going to use it is I really want my cupcake to look like it's maybe a pumpkin cupcake, which is going to be a bit warmer than a brown, but it's not going to be so bright that it's an orange. In order to achieve that, I'm going to use something called color glazing, and this works because alcohol markers are transparent. So I'm going to go in first with my browns as my base, and then I'm going to bring in that E09 for some warmth, and I still contributing to like this is going in the, the darkest portion, but it has a little bit more warmth. And then to bring the whole thing together, I'm going to go over it with a YR04. This was a little bit too orange for my liking, so I'll go back in with the lightest color of brown, which is an E23, and then I have a really nice kind of pumpkin-colored cupcake that just required me to kind of play around with the color palettes that I had. So now that we have everything colored, I'm going to go ahead and use the coordinating dies to cut all of these out. I didn't end up using all of the elements for this specific card, but um, that just means that I'll have them to use another time. Something to note for the dies, the witch legs are not one die, they're two. So each leg has its own die cut, and that's so you can arrange them any way that you would like. 
So you could do them kind of sticking out of the cupcake like I did, or you could do them like under the cupcake, like, you know, Wizard of Oz, the house fell on the witch, the cupcake fell on the witch kind of thing. Um, but it just gives you an opportunity to position them however you want. Here, if you guys have watched my channel before, you know I am cheap. I am a cheap chicken, and I really wanted like a fun kind of black glitter paper to be my mat, but I am far too cheap to waste this a big of a piece of glitter paper. So I went in with my black distress ink, and sometimes it can be, if you're just taking the ink pad to paper, it can be hard to kind of get in the fibers. So I use my paper pouncer to really make sure that I'm, you know, getting that all where it needs to be uh, so that it's solid. And then in order to add the glitter, I'm going to go right over top of that with this um, Paper Glaze Lux. This one is black eyeliner and is a glittery black. And I will just go around the edges with this. It's going to add not lots of nice glitter. And nobody's going to see that inside part that's kind of a mess because we're going to have a white piece that goes over that. The only thing that I will caution you with making your own glitter paper, um, and these clean up, that's what I'm showing you here. They clean up super easy. This is just a wet microfiber cloth and I can just go in and wipe it up. The, the, the paper glazes clean up really nicely. Here I wanted to show you this is the cupcake that we released back in December of last year and this is a great kind of accent to that cupcake. They're nicely sized. They would work together so if you already have that set this one will work with that. But anyway, back to the glitter paper. Um, I used mine on an 80 pound cardstock and it did slightly warp my paper, the moisture of the paste, uh, because I put down such a thick layer. Um, it did slightly warp it. I then ran it through my, I put it in like a copy paper sleeve, and then I ran it through my die cutting machine and it flattened right out. Um, but you could just use a heavier card stack, probably like 110 pound would be fine. Um, and it, I don't think it would warp nearly as much. So here I am using, this is the base um, kind of layer, the white layer that I'm going to be putting my cupcakes on. Originally, I thought I was going to do three different cards, but when I drew these, I always, like whenever I draw something, I always lay it out so that I can color it. One, because it's fun, and two, so I can kind of see how everything works together to make sure I don't need to make any adjustments to my stamp design. And this is how I laid them out digitally. And so that was just like in my mind and I couldn't shake it. Like sometimes you just have a card idea that like until you make it, you can't see it any other way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm recreating that uh, look that I had already laid out. So my little witch has the little happy Halloween, the witch hat and the little feet. Um, this one is like more of a, you know, kind of like vampire style cupcake. So it's got the little fangs that fit right over um, the little cupcake holder and then the little bats to go with it. For the other one, I did the spiders and the spider web as well as the little skull. Um, and then all of them, well, not the witch one, but the other one's got like little candy straws, whether you color them striped or you color them solid. I did both. Um, but they're just, they're super cute. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can put them together, which I love because I love versatility. But I don't love the white outline on a die. And if you watch my channel, you know that to be true. Um, so I do, I am going to go back in and because we've colored everything, I have all of the the same colors. And so I'm just going to use my markers to color in those white edges so that everything looks really cohesive and we don't have those white edges um, on the actual cupcake. The white edges on the card doesn't really matter so much like on the outside because I'm using a white background. So I am just going to go in and fill in these outlines, um, which is really easy to do. I did want to show you this one because you would be able to see through the spider web, I am going back and kind of recreating the shading that I did on the cupcake just so that it looks like you can see through that spider web. Alternatively, you could stamp it on a piece of vellum or you could do white heat embossing, um, you know, over the frosting so that you could see the uh, little spider web. The background felt a little plain to me. I know splatters aren't for everyone. Skip the step if you're not into it. That's totally fine. 
I did some black soot watered down uh, just to create some little black speckles in the background. And then I am going to use the um, paper splatters in the snowflake color to add a little bit of shine to the background. Again, just doing some light splatters. I don't want anything that's going to compete with my design, but I didn't want it to just be stark white either. Here I am using some foam tape and I am going to spare you, because <laughs> it took me forever, uh, I'm going to spare you the watching of adding the foam tape to all the little bits and parts. Sometimes, you know, you ever get aggravated with yourself, like, why do you see it this way? Why must it be popped up? And I just felt like it just needed to be popped up. I don't know why, but that's the way that I felt about it. So I did add foam to all the little bits. Um, when I'm putting together a card like this that has several elements, I do like to start with the middle so that way I can move the left and the right hand side wherever I need to to create balance. Because even though the cupcakes are all the same size, the accents or the decorations that we've put on them do change the shape. Here, I was trying to eyeball it and I couldn't get it right. So I did get my T-square ruler out and lay it down so that way I would be able to put it where it needed to go. That is absolutely a trick that you can use to line things up. I typically am not that particular. <laughs> I will just eyeball it. Um, but for some reason, that little skull one was giving me fits. So this is the last cupcake, peeling off the release paper, and then I will get that lined up. Um, I think these are so cute. I just love them. I know Halloween isn't for everyone, um, and I totally get that. But if it's for you, this one is a, is a really fun one to play with. So I'm just going to add some candy corns at the bottom. I also added a little spider and a little spider web. That's also where I'm going to put my sentiment. And then I just used glue where it overlapped the cupcake and some... Uh, foam adhesive where it didn't. So like in this case, I put down the candy corn so then I could figure out where the foam tape needed to go um, so that everything was kind of popped up and level where it needed to be. The tiny bat that I added... Um, which I haven't added yet, but I will. Uh, up next to the other bat, I also popped that up. I added some little black baubles. And then to finish it off, I am, of course, going to add some white highlights um, and, of course, glitter because I love all the, all the glitters. And I'm really happy with the way that it came out. I know slim lines are kind of hit or miss for people, but I love having them all together. I think they look super cute. And, you know, I'll be able to give this to one of my kids for Halloween. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that this inspires you to really practice your Copa coloring and find ways that can make it work for you so you don't get bored along the way. I always appreciate your time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.